Hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be exploring the London Coin Fair with the amazing Cobra Stacker. So with that being the case, without any further delay, let's get on with the coin show. So, the London Coin Fair. What was it like? Was it any good? And what did it look like inside? These are all things I'm going to be answering in this video. Because for anybody who wasn't already aware, I have very recently attended the London Coin Fair with the amazing Cobra Stacker. It was an absolutely amazing day where I got to meet Cobra face to face, um, finally put a face to the name and uh, just basically have a bit of a get together and uh, a walk around the coin fair. So what I'm going to be doing today is first of all just going through a very quick description of how I found the fair, what it was like and whether or not it lived up to my expectations. After which I'm going to be reviewing the beautiful coins that I was able to pick up from whilst I was there at the fair. And after that, I'm going to share a walk around video, just giving you an idea of what it was like to be inside the fair, and just to give you a bit of an idea of what the experience was like for us. So as I say, first of all, my opinion of the fair. Well, I want what I want to say before I say anything else is this may be a little unfair because I do have to take into account that there were train strikes on the day, which did ultimately affect the number of both buyers and sellers that were in attendance on the day. So on a different day, it could have been a completely different experience. So I will have to take that into account. But that being said, I am kind of on the fence with the whole experience because on the one hand, I did have a great time. It was a wonderful experience and I was able to, as I say, pick up quite a few very nice coins. But on the other hand, in many ways, I was left wanting after leaving the event. I, I did find items I wasn't looking for at a, at a great price that I thought would be nice to pick up, but I wasn't able to find any of the items that I actually wanted to find. When I went down there, I had a short list of a few coins that I thought would, it would be a great opportunity to pick up but none of them were, were there or were there for a price that I was willing to pay for them. So, as although I did have a good time, and I do think it could have been a much better experience had it have not been for the train strikes, I, I can't give it any more than maybe a three out of five stars from me because, as I say, it was exceedingly lacking. There was literally no representation from any of the large bullion dealers there at all. However, there were a couple of auction houses there and a couple of collections that will be auctioned later in this month. Uh, one thing I will say is, as I say, I was there in attendance with Cope Stacker and he has his own video up where he shares a brilliant interview he was able to undertake with one of the auction dealers while we were at the event. So I do highly recommend that you head over and watch that video if you haven't done so already. I will definitely be putting a link to that video in the description below. So as I say, please definitely go ahead and check that out if it is something you haven't seen already. So with that being my opinion of the fair, let's have a look at some of the coins that I was actually able to pick up. So first of all, I'm going to share a couple of freebies with you because these coins were actually given to me in my change. This one was uh, given to me in the first store I visited very early on in the day. And as you can see, it's a 2005 dictionaries coin, which uh, is not the best find, but you know what? It's a free coin and it, uh, yeah, no, I was very happy to find it all the same. So to go alongside that, we also have a 2006 Brunel's Achievement Coins, which again, a very nice find and one that I didn't have to pay for because it was handed to me in my change at the fair. So they're the two freebies that I was able to pick up, which I was really, really happy about. And uh, other than them, I'll go through what I what I purchased in order. So the first coin I picked up was a little bit of a cheat because I didn't actually buy it in the fair. I bought it just before I went in. So that's one I'm not going to go into too much detail today. I'm going to leave that to review a little bit later on in the channel. So moving on to the coins that I actually purchased from the fair. The first ones we have were these three beautiful silver proofs right here. And as you can see, this is a 2005 Gibraltar. Raphael David McClough, Queen Elizabeth II, 
five pound silver proof. And this right here is the 1805 to 2005 Trafalgar coin showing Admiral Horatio Nelson stood in front of Nelson's column right there. So yes, we have that one right there. Next up, again, these are all Gibraltar 2005 silver proofs, uh, all showing the Raphael David McClough depiction of Queen Elizabeth II right there. Uh, but this one is the VJ Day £5 coin. And as you can see, you've got a red poppy right at the bottom of the coin there, and uh, a few army officers sat around a table, probably playing their next battle. And uh, very similar in theme, if not design, to the next coin that I have, which is another Nelson commemorative, again from 2005, once again with the exact same obverse design right there, but this one has Nelson and some of his officers sat around a table, once again probably strategizing their next battle, which would have been a naval battle in this case. So yes, three absolutely beautiful coins. Now, these were what I would be consider to be my absolute best budget buys of the day because uh, as we walked into the show, quite early on, on the right-hand side, there was a, a seller there that had a tub full of silver proofs or silver coins that he'd recently bought purchased as a collection. He explained that he didn't really want to take the time to go through the coins individually to see what there was there. Uh, so he was actually selling them at a, an amazing price of £16 each or five for £75. Uh, because it was very early on in the day and I didn't know what I was going to be finding inside, I actually at that point in time uh, restricted myself to buying just for free coins and instead of taking the five for £75 offer. Uh, after that, we took a little bit of a walk around, and I will be honest with you, there was actually only two sellers that I purchased from. Uh, the next one was a guy who had a mix of both bullion and old pre-decimal coins. So, uh, looking at the pre-decimal, I have picked up another florin for the album, which is this very, very worn 1907 Edward VII Standing Britannia florin. And uh, the reason I picked this one, be, despite the fact that it, it is in quite a warm condition, I will get this out so we can have a quick look at the coin. But as I say, the reason I purchased this one is because it was for the amazing price of seven pounds. And again, it you know it's not the best condition, Florin. It's certainly not as good as the previous Florin that I unboxed on the channel, but. For the price of seven pounds, you can't complain, can you? It's a uh, very, very worn reverse, but uh, not too bad on the obverse, actually. You know, you can still make out uh, Edward the Seventh there quite well. So, moving on, we'll, uh, we'll go on to the next pre decimal coin. So, I'm just going to move my light here so we can uh, pick the coins up a little bit better. Hopefully, that will work a bit better. But the next, the next coin from this seller I purchased was. This 1937, now I did have to point out the mistake on his uh, label because it's not a 1917, it's 1937, King George VI, coronation, 500 silver, crown. And uh, one that I didn't have for collection, it's one that I have been looking for with it being a coronation year, uh, especially with this, with this year being a coronation year, it's kind of got me into the coronation coins and I'm looking back just to see what coins I can pick up going forwards. So that was the next purchase, I purchased them uh, I think both at the same time. So we took a, a bit of a, a walk round again uh, around the show just to see what uh, what was there. You never you never buy everything on your first walk round. Always always go and see what's uh, what's available before you make any big purchases. Then go back if you need to. Uh, again, once uh, once again, this this one was picked up for the great price of seventeen pound, which is why I picked that up straight away because I thought you know what I'm probably not going to find it any cheaper than that here. So I'll, I'll grab that one right now, but. Having taken a walk round and uh, after having a little break outside, we went back in and uh, went back to the same store where I bought the Florent and the Crown and uh, I was able to pick up a couple of very, very nice bullion pieces. The first of which is this 2016 Cucabra. 
and it's for one with the cucumbers stood on the post with a barbed wire and it's an absolutely beautiful coin and it's the second of my cucumbers now i i purchased my first one at the very first cobra live auction and uh, so it's a series I've been wanting to get into for quite some time. And now I've, I've popped the cherry and I've got my first Coke. I am wanting to get the rest of the set as, as quickly as possible. Now, it's going to be difficult because some of them are scarce dates and uh, very, very difficult to find. But I'm two down already. So uh, we'll see how quickly it takes me to get a few more of those. But as I say, that's the 2016 Cucabra. And uh, we can say Australian, sorry, we can see Australian Cucabra across the top. 2016, one ounce, 999 silver at the bottom. And if we have a quick look at the obverse of a coin, that right there is the Ian Rank Broadley depiction of Queen Elizabeth II. And uh, as you can clearly see, the legend around the coin reads Elizabeth II, Australia, $1. And if you look very closely, you can see the initials of Ian Rank Broadley just underneath the depiction of Queen Elizabeth II right there. Okay, so as I was standing there looking at uh, the bullion pieces that I wanted to find, and uh, as I say, the one the one area of this show was really lacking, if any, was the bullion, because it really didn't have the greatest selection available. However, as I was stood there perusing the few bullion pieces he did have, I, uh, I happened to glance to the left where, it, it, as I say, it was more numismatic, pre-decimal and other pieces like that. And I noticed this just sat there. And what this one is, is this is the 2019 Royal Arms coin. And it's, a, it's again, a series that I've gotten into this year by picking up the 2023 Royal Arms. And uh, I think it's, a, it's another series I'm possibly going to try and get a little date one together and see if I can pick up any more of the uh, the different years of these coins because I now have the 2023 and the 2019 but just to give you a quick view of the coin as you can see on the reverse right there you have the royal coat of arms with the lion and unicorn with 2019 above uh, you have the four quadrant shield showing the heraldic beasts of England, Scotland and Ireland and just to blow just below you can see one ounce fine silver 999 and if we take a quick look at the obverse right there we can see that it says elizabeth ii dg reg fd two pounds and that of course is abbreviated latin and would translate to elizabeth ii by grace of god queen defender of the faith two pounds and uh, this right here is the Jodie Clark depiction of Queen Elizabeth. And once again, you can see the initials of Jodie Clark just below the depiction of Queen Elizabeth right there. OK, so with that being the case, it was getting late in the day and I knew it's probably time to start making my final purchases of the day. So having had a walk around the show, I, uh, I knew what was out there at this point. And uh, to be honest with you, the only pieces I really had left that I really wanted to pick up was I wanted to go back to the bargain bucket with the silver proofs in because I noticed that Cobra had found a couple of UK silver proofs in the box, which I hadn't seen. I'd only seen the Gibraltar one, so I didn't know there was UK or any other nationality in there. So I thought to myself, I'm going to go back to that store. I'm actually even going to have a word with the guy and see if he'd let me pick add another couple to the original three for the five for seventy-five pound deal. And having a quick word with him, he was more than happy for, for me to do that. So I had at this time I had a really good rummage through the box. I waited for people to get out of the way. I, I, I got down on my knees. I that was me there for a little while until I went through the entire box, saw what was in there and picked the best two remaining coins in there, which for, in my opinion were these two right here. Because what we have right here first of all is a 2010 Austrian Philharmonic one ounce silver bullion. And as you can see at the top of the coin there, it does say Republic Ostrich. And uh, underneath that, we have a beautiful depiction of a pipe organ under which it does read one under fine silver, 2010, 1.50 euro. And if we take a quick look at the reverse of the coin, we can see above the top it reads 
Vina Philharmonica and uh, we do have quite a few of the instruments of the orchestra right there. I can see a harp, I can see a bass, quite a few violins and uh, a French horn at the back there. So yes, an absolutely beautiful coin. But the best thing about that is because I got it for the deal for five for 75, it works out I got this one ounce silver coin, uh, one ounce fine silver for the value of 15 pounds, which is actually lower than spot price right now. So I, yeah, I got this one ounce of fine silver for under spot. Now it is very, very badly milk spotted as you can see. But as I say, I could melt this down and scrap it in and still make a profit. So regardless of the milk spots, I thought that was probably the best bargain buy of the day. Because as I say, that's a one ounce bullion coin. So other than that, I uh, I nearly picked up. It was a coin that was celebrating the year of the Free Kings, which was, of course, I do believe 1937, which is the year that King George VI became a uh, king. Because not only did his father, uh, King George V, die, uh, but at that point, it, the throne went to his brother, King Edward VIII, who after only ruling for a few months, uh, advocated his throne and it was passed down to King George VI. So in that one year, we were, we actually were able to have three different kings, which is quite a significant year. It's not something that happened very often, especially not during modern times. So that was something that I did definitely have my eyes on. But it, it was quite marked. Uh, it wasn't in great proof condition whatsoever. Um, it was a nice coin, but as I say, it, uh, it did have quite a few marks on it. But after a little bit more digging, I was able to find this absolutely beautiful 1989 Bicentennial or Congress dollar. And uh, what really made me want this one is because I've started picking up a couple of dollars. I've, uh, I've obviously very recently received a peace dollar from the amazing Cranky Stacker, as well as picking up a Morgan for myself. So it's, it's brilliant to add another dollar to the collection, uh, even if, especially with it being a commemorative dollar. And uh, as I say, these were issued for the Bicentennial and uh, around the top of the coin, you can see it reads United States of America, E Pluribus Unum, Bicentennial of the Congress, one dollar. And uh, E Pluribus Unum, of course, being Latin for from many comes one. Of course, right there, you can see the American Eagle stood atop a pole. So if we take a quick look at the, I assume that that would be the reverse. I'm not entirely sure when it comes to American coins. We can see it says Liberty across the top and In God We Trust across the bottom. And uh, as you see, we've got Lady Liberty stood right there with uh, some kind of explosion behind her and she is standing strong and uh, astride that we have the dates 1789 and 1989 which of course was the year that congress was set up uh, below the 1989 we have the s which is the mint mark for the san francisco mint and uh, as I say, it's just an absolutely beautiful coin. Now, I did have to uh, lean on my good friend Cranky Stacker for some of the information regarding this coin because uh, I don't know a huge amount regarding the American coin. So he has given me some brilliant information regarding that. So thank you once again, Cranky Stacker. I do appreciate that. That was very kind of you. But that is all of the coins that I was able to pick up at the fair. So there was a, quite a few nice pieces. I'll just pop the royal arms back in there for people to see. Uh, and as I say, yeah, some very, very nice pieces at some great prices. But I, I wasn't able to pick up the two pieces that I really wanted the most, which was a Q Gardens, just a circulating Q Gardens, just for the 50p album, because I've already got the first day cover edition locked away under lock and key. So I just wanted, you know, a cheaper version just for the album. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find one of those. And the other item was in Una and the Lion Bar, which again, very sadly, I wasn't able to find anywhere at the fair. However, as you may have already know, if you did tune into the live auction over at Cobra Stacker's channel on Sunday, 
I have now been able to pick one up from the auction. So I'm very happy about that. That's ticked that one off the list. So I do now have my Uno in the line. So yes, once again, just to summarise, the fair does receive a three out of five stars from myself. There was quite a diverse array of coins to choose from. But it was definitely lacking very much in certain key areas. So, yes, as I say, I did have a great time. That, however, was mostly due to meeting up with the amazing Cobra Stacker. That, that is what made the day for me. Now, I did say to Cobra at the time, if I'd have taken the time to drive all the way down to London uh, just to walk around the show and purchase what I was able to purchase there, I would have left feeling very disappointed um you know i might have made a bit of saving on the coins but when i take into account the amount of petrol and time it took for me to drive to london and back um you know that that throws the savings well out the window so what made the day so amazing for me was the, the fact that i did it was a chance for me to meet Kobe stacker so to answer the question would i attend again i would have to say uh, at this point i'm leaning more towards yes but only because I want to see what it's like in its full glory without any train strikes. I don't think after that I would want to reattend it again. But I would like to give it a fair a fair crack of a whip and see what it's like when, when we, it doesn't have the issues that we did encounter. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch along and listen to my opinion on the London Coin Fair, which took place on Saturday the 3rd of September, as well as taking the time to let me show you the beautiful pickups that I was able to pick up there. So as I say at the beginning of the video, the next stop on the Little London Coin Fair tour is actually a walk around video. Now, before we do transition across to that i do want to take the time to say that it was exceedingly difficult to get any amount of footage for all of you and uh that wasn't our fault now me and cobra went together and we spoke to the organizers before we attended the, the fair we explained the situation we uh we told them that we'd like to film as we were going around there there was a sign that said photography was unallowed for any unauthorized people so we we took the time to go and speak to the organizers and we got ourselves organized to uh to film some videos as we were walking around it was on the understanding that we could we could happily take broad general shots uh, i.e stood in the corner of the room just looking across the room that kind of thing but if you wanted to uh, take any kind of detailed videos of the stores or the sellers themselves we would have to ask for permission which we were more than happy to do however despite that being the case literally within 20 seconds of just walking into the event literally just walking down the corridor just filming the entire room not focusing on any in particular seller at all i had somebody grab me by the shoulder and tell me that i wasn't allowed to film i explained to them that we'd seen we'd seek permission and had been given it he uh he he questioned that he didn't believe that that was the case and he went off to speak to the organizers i wasn't going to waste my time waiting for him knowing that i'd already got the authorization that i needed so both myself and cobra continued back into the show now uh the similar thing just kept happening it just kept happening over and over again so what i had to eventually end up doing was basically just filming it uh hidden camera style i had to hide the fact that i was filming uh so with the footage isn't as great as what i would have hoped but i have definitely done the best that i can to give you a good understanding of what it's like to attend the fair for yourself but that's not all and i cannot recommend sticking around till the end of the video enough because i have an absolutely amazing treat for you all so skip through the walk around if you need to do whatever you have to do but definitely make sure you are there for the end of the video because there is an absolutely amazing treat so it's not technically the end of the video but i won't get a chance to do this again so with that being the case until next time as always look after each other keep stacking take care and goodbye
Hey guys, how are we all doing? So we've just walked out of the London Coin Fair and I'm here with the amazing Cobra Stacker. How you doing guys? Well, here's the face reveal <laughs> and it will go out on the Stack Collectors channel. So there you go. Don't say you don't get all the gossip here first. So how are we doing Cobra? How, what did you think to the Coin Fair there? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, Coin Fair, I'll be very honest, um, I'm more of a modern day collector and they had a lot of older coins there which are more suited to you really. Definitely. Um, so I picked up a couple of bits, but nowhere near what I was hoping to see or get. Um, so a little disappointed, not as many stalls and not as much as I wanted, but still met a few interesting people and had a little chat with a couple of people as well. Definitely. Yeah, and personally, I did think that uh, there was plenty of interesting bits there. There were some actually really nice pieces. It wasn't that there was a lack of pieces, but every time we found something that we liked, it just seemed to be quite ridiculously overpriced. Uh, Cobra was looking at a, at a mm. te, one, one kilogram coin? No, was it? it was a 10 ounce James Bond proof silver coin. Now, if you think that a 10 ounce, let's say Max, you're paying 300 on a bullion, and then double it because it's a proof, and then add a bit on because it's a James Bond coin, you'd maybe look at about a grand. Yeah. Uh, they wanted 3,000 for it, and I just thought, no, you're way, way over. And that is the problem bit overpriced and I get it they've got to pay their stall fees and all that and that will whack it up but way overpriced on a lot of it yeah absolutely I mean personally I was looking for a Kew Gardens that was one coin that I definitely wanted to get today uh, I did find a store with some Kew Gardens they weren't in a presentation pack they were just loose and they still wanted 400 pounds for them so that's a coin I possibly would have uh, personally valued about 150 to 200 pounds at an absolute tops and they wanted double that so it does go to show that the, uh, the prices that we've got are... yeah definitely I picked up a few bits I got a few scarce Britannia so I'll go through that on my channel at some point. Yeah. Picked up a few cooks and all that lot. But as I say, nowhere near what I wanted. I think for me, it's got to be the Berlin show coming up in February. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think people will be shocked to learn that both myself and Cobra are going home with change. A lot. Quite a lot, <laughs> yes, actually. So there's a, there's a quick glance of what I purchased today. I will definitely be getting those on the channel to review for you all very soon. But with that being the case, I think that's pretty much it for now. So say goodbye, Adios. Cobra. Take care. Adios, and I will catch the rest of you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.